Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the chemical earth module, module in year 11 chemistry. And in particular, we'll be looking at this first-hand investigation and it's on the effect of light on silver salts. Okay? So like always, we're gonna look at you know, what we're gonna do in this prac or this experiment and how, um, how to perform this prac safely and also in a scientifically valid way. Okay. So our aim is to determine the effect of light on silver chloride and silver bromide. Okay, so we want to know what the effect of light is on these two substances. Okay? Now these two substances were very uh, popular before digital cameras were invented because we use them in our photographic film. So you know in the old I don't know if you guys remember, or maybe if you were too young to remember before the digital age, basically film had silver ingrained in it, and when it got struck by light, it would change, and then you'd get, um, you'd get you know, a photograph, essentially, of what's going on. Okay? So these were popular back in the olden days, I suppose. So the method we're going to use when we um, produce this is we're going to have to prepare these silver chloride and silver bromide solutions first. So we pre prepare precipitates of the white silver chloride and the cream colored silver bromide by mixing silver nitrate with sodium chloride and sodium bromide solutions. Okay? So if we want to create silver chloride, we, we use s silver nitrate, which is this, and sodium chloride. Okay? Now we'll just quickly double check our solubility rules here because this will. Um, may stuff stuff up if we don't get this right. So nitrates are all soluble, which is good. It means that that won't precipitate with anything. The sodium, all group one metal compounds are soluble. So that also won't precipitate with anything. So we're okay, these are both good. Now the chloride will precipitate with the silver and give you the AgCl like we actually want. Okay, and that's what we do. We just mix these two chemicals together and it'll form a white precipitate, which will be silver chloride. Okay? Now, if we want to make the silver bromide, all we have to do is replace... So, we're using the same silver chloride, and so we're not changing that chemical, but we're just going to put bromine, bromine here, and so we'll get silver bromide on this side. Okay? So that's the chemical reaction that's going on in step one. Okay? And we're forming this crystal or this precipitate using these methods. Okay. Then we go and take those two solutions that we've made. They now are in, have all this you know, precipitate through them. And obviously if we want to get the precipitate out, we can filter it. So we filter each mixture to obtain samples of each precipitate on filter paper. So there we have our filter paper or our filtering device. Just pour it through the filter paper and then hopefully the silver chloride or silver bromide will just be stuck in the filter. Now place the open papers on watch glasses either in the sun or under a UV lamp. So you may not have access to a UV lamp like this but you know the, the earth has its own UV lamp you know 200 million kilometers away and that's the sun so we might as well use it. Um, so you just put your silver chloride in the filter paper and the silver bromide as well put them on a watch glass um, and then leave them out in the sun. Or if you do have a UV lamp available, you can use that also. Okay. Now UV lamp would be preferable be, be, uh, because mainly because um, you don't know what else is in the sun's spectrum. Uh, that could also alter your results a little bit. So we, by using a UV lamp, you're just making your results that much more accurate. Okay. And then all we do is compare the color changes with a control sample not exposed to light. Okay? So we take you know, the samples that were in the sun and we look at them and we compare them to the, a sample that we didn't leave in the sun. We just put them in the dark somewhere. Okay? And then we see what the differences are. And the reason why we use a control is so that we can actually see if it was the light making these changes or if it was something else that we didn't account for. Okay. 
And I'll give you an example of why that's important. So let's say your silver chloride, you had two samples of silver chloride, one in the sun and one in the, in the dark somewhere, you left it in a cupboard. And one, you saw the one that turned black, okay? You saw the one in the sun turned black. Now, there are lots of other things happening in the environment that could have done that, or you know, that may have done that. So what we do is we look at the control and say, well, did the control, the one in the dark, turn black? If not, then it must have been the light, because other, everything else should be about the same. The temperature and pressures are about the same, and you know, the composition of the atmosphere is about the same in both places. So you can see that if one changes and the other one doesn't, then we know that it was the different, you know, the very, that different variable that would have made that change. So that's why we use a control, to ensure that we see that we can attribute the change to the variable that we think it is. Okay, so here are some results that you'll typically find. Now if this doesn't happen, don't be worried, lots of things go wrong in scientific experiments, and particularly in school ones, because they don't always go the way we plan. So the silver salts will darken quickly, especially in UV light. So they can turn from this white color, this would be silver chloride, to purple, so it'll be purple first, and if you leave it out there long enough, it'll turn black, okay? So that's what you expect to see. And that's what happens in the photographic film as well. The dark grains, so these purpley grains of, um, of silver chloride, are due to the formation of silver, as in not just silver chloride, as in pure silver. So when you expose silver chloride to light, you form pure silver um, crystals or grains. And that's the darkening, that's what happens. Okay. So safety. So we always have to talk about safety because schools are all about OH&S. So silver nitrate, there aren't many dangers in this pack, but just be aware that silver nitrate can make dark stains on skin and clothing. So I've gotten silver chloride on my fingers once and I had you know black stains all over my fingers for, I can't even remember, it would have been at least two or three weeks. Not dangerous at all, but not particularly attractive either. Okay, so just be aware of that. And for clothing, it lasts even longer because for your skin, your skin comes off. Like it rubs off and new layers of skin grow. So the layer that was affected by the silver nitrate will eventually come off and you know, then you're sorted. But if it's on your clothing, um, it probably won't come out ever. So your parents will be very, very upset if you get it on your clothing. So don't do that. And the way to avoid that is, you know, to wear aprons. That's, this is key. Very, very important for the clothing. And goggles, so that you don't get it in your eye, which I don't think I've ever seen happen, but you know, sometimes it can. And gloves to avoid having the situation like me, having black stains all over your fingers. Okay, so this isn't really about safety, but it's all about, you know, sort of minimizing the amount of inconvenience that you might experience. Okay? So that concludes today's lesson on this first-hand investigation. So we've looked at, you know, what the PRAC is, and it's looking at the effect of silver, light on silver salts, which is, and it turns, you know, white crystals purple than black. And then we've looked at the method, how to prepare these things, and also how to do this safely, okay? So move on to the question segment now, and hopefully um, it'll expand your knowledge and hopefully test you on your scientific methodologies. Okay, so silver salts were once used extensively in, the pho in photography. From the results of this experiment, explain how silver salts were used in this industry. So I kind of touched on that earlier, but no harm in looking at it again. So firstly, it could have been silver bromide, it could have been silver chloride, not really a big deal which one it is. But silver chlor uh, bromide is applied to the photographic film. So you just take the silver bromide paste, you sort of apply it very thin layer on your photographic film, and that's your essentially your film. So when the film is exposed to light, the silver bromide decomposes, just like in the silver chloride case, forming a silver deposit in the shape of the image on the negative, okay? So 
So if I was looking through a camera, as you know, you're sort of doing to me, um, the parts that are very bright will be dark on the film because the UV light turns the silver bromide black. So anything that has a very big light or a lot of light will be black and anything that's very dark will be white. That's why they call it a negative because it's the opposite of what's actually happening in reality. And so that's why you take it to your, um, oh, I don't remember if you remember this, but you used to take it to the Photoshop and then they'd, um, they'd turn that film into your actual photograph. So that's what happens, okay? So describe the changes that occur in a silver salt, e.g. silver chloride, bromide, or iodide, one of these three, when it's exposed to light. So silver chloride changes from white to purple, and then black when exposed to UV light. So it goes from white to purple, and you saw that in our lesson, and then from that purple it goes sort of to a blackish color um, if you expose it to enough light. Um, if you have a very thin layer, then the amount of light you need becomes less, and that's why photographic film can get away with it, um, and that's why you don't see purple film ever, um, because the layer is so thin. Okay. Now the darkening is due to the deposition of silver metal, so it's the silver chloride becoming silver metal and turning black. And what else you'll notice is the mass of the silver chloride will actually decrease. You won't have as much silver chloride because it's being changed into silver metal. Okay, so the mass should go down. So question 13, for, a silver for silver chloride, write an equation for the light decomposition reaction, assuming chlorine gas is also produced. Okay, so that's our assumption. That when we, we know that silver solid, silver metal, comes out, and we assume that the remaining part, the chlorine, the chloride, becomes chlorine gas. Okay, so here's our word equation. Silver chloride plus this little UV light react, uh, sort of light, Silver turns into silver metal plus chlorine gas. So that's how we start. Okay, so we have now AgCl goes to form 2Ag plus Cl2. Now, if you want to know how I got to that, basically we're saying we started with this and we know it forms this. And we know that chlorine gas is this. Oops, so there's two there. So now you just have to balance the equation. So to get the same number of chlorine, we just multiply this by two. And then now there's two more, there's two AGs on this side. So we just need two on this side. So we just put a two here. And that's how we get that answer. Okay. So if you're worried about balancing chemical equations, um, have a look at oops, have a look at the video on balancing chemical equations um, and help practice with that and hopefully you'll understand how to quickly do these things. Okay? With practice, it becomes very, very easy. Okay? So don't worry too much, but just go back and have a look at that video, and hopefully you'll be able to learn it very quickly. Question 14. List the safety equipment required to conduct an experiment on the effect of light on silver salts. Okay? So what do we need for this to work? Well, we definitely need the aprons. Remember, we don't want to get any of that silver nitrate on our um, clothing because it will stay there for a really really long time. We need goggles because if it gets in your eye I'm not sure what actually happens but I can't imagine it being a very good thing. So we need goggles to protect our eyes and gloves to stop you from getting black stains all over your hands Okay, because you don't want that either. Okay, So that's basically the safety equipment that you need. You don't need anything else really. Question 15. What is the control used in this first-hand investigation? So what is the control that we're comparing all of our results to? The control is the sample left in the dark away from the sunlight. So that's our control. We've left it in some kind of cupboard um, at hopefully the same temperature as the rest of it. And why is a control necessary in many experiments? So I touched on this again in our class, but here's a good chance to recap on it. A control is necessary to understand the result of your experiment. Uh, to understand whether your, the results of your experiment are occurring during, due to the change in the independent variable. Okay, so is the change in your reaction or is the change in your experiment actually caused by what you think it's being caused by? Okay, so as again we'll look at it, if my assumption is that 
the silver salt is changing because of the sunlight. Now we need to have a control to say, look, is it actually changing because of the sunlight? So if, for instance, it went black in the sunlight and it also went black in the dark, then obviously it can't be the sunlight that's changing it because one is not exposed to sunlight at all. So that's why we need a control to make sure that we know what's actually causing the change that we're expecting. So some reactions occur naturally, and experimentalists must be able to differentiate changes due to natural conditions from changes due to independent variable changing. Okay? So as I mentioned, if it was black in both cases, then we know it's not the sunlight that's doing that. It's something else in the environment. But if you know, the sunlight one was black and the not sunlight one was still white, then we know that the sunlight is probably the, the change here because it's the only difference among the two. Okay, so that's why we use a control. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson and this series on um, energy and chemical change. So we've looked at, um, in this particular lesson, we looked at a first-hand investigation on silver salts. And while we didn't do a lot of chemistry as such, we did a lot of experimental work. And that is a very big foundation of science, experimental work. So this is an important topic to know simply because it helps you understand what an experiment is and how to better um, design your experiments in the future if a career in science is something that interests you. Okay? So hopefully you'll be around with us for our next lesson. And so I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.